You've probably heard about Project 2025, the massive right-wing plan to turn the U.S. into a Christian authoritarian hellscape. Project 2025. Project 2025. Project 2025. Right. You might have heard that it introduces policies that attack LGBTQ plus and reproductive rights. You may have heard that it's a giant plan to dismantle the federal government and remake it to maximize Trump's power. You may have even heard the creator of Project 2025 say things like, We are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. Slay, may the odds be ever in our favor. But how seriously should we take any of this? What does Project 2025 actually say, and how likely is it to become reality if Trump wins? I went down the rabbit hole so that you don't have to. Let's make sense of this cesspool together. In the dark. With tea. Nom nom nom. We'll put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Project 2025 is a blueprint for how conservatives would govern if Trump retakes office in 2025. Its nearly 900 page policy book lays out an overhaul of the federal government. My first complaint is that it's too long. It was produced by conservative think tank, the Heritage Foundation, along with a hundred other conservative groups, many of whom are funded by just two right-wing billionaires. Since 1980, Heritage has been publishing policy recommendations for Republican presidents. Reagan implemented or tried to implement nearly two thirds of Heritage's policy recommendations during his presidency. During Trump's presidency, he included nearly 65% of Heritage's recommendations in his first year budget. Project 2025 is the newest of these policy recommendation books. It wasn't written by Trump, obviously. Trump can't even count to 900. He doesn't have the attention span. But over 200 former officials of the Trump administration contributed to it. So let's break down some of the major goals of Project 2025. Project 2025's first conservative promise is to restore the family as the centerpiece of American life and protect our children. Conservatives will restore the family as the centerpiece of American life and protect our children. They've got two big plans to accomplish this. The first is to crack down on abortion access using a law called the Comstock Act, a 150-year-old law that bans the mailing of items deemed obscene. For the past 50 years, it's been viewed as this vague, unenforceable relic. But Project 2025 recommends using the Comstock Act to outlaw mailing medication and equipment for abortions, which would create a de facto abortion ban without having to go through Congress. What they may not know is that longstanding federal law prohibits shipping abortion drugs by mail. So here's hoping they don't find that out the hard way. The second Project 2025 plan to save the American family is to basically outlaw the existence of trans people. The foreword describes the omnipresent propagation of transgender ideology and sexualization of children as pornography that should be outlawed and says that the people who produce and distribute it should be imprisoned. They want to register teachers who talk about transness as sex offenders and shut down internet providers that facilitate the spread of pro-trans content. They recommend using the Department of Justice to go after district attorneys who don't crack down on queer people aggressively enough. Project 2025 also argues that allowing parents or physicians to reassign the sex of a minor is child abuse and must end, suggesting that the CDC and the NIH should stop research relating to gender identity unless it's to prove that gender affirming care is bad. So just how likely are these things to happen if Trump wins the election? Pretty likely. The author of a bunch of the anti-trans content is Roger Severino, who served under Trump as the director for the Office of Civil Rights at the HHS. Back then, he removed non-discrimination protections for LGBTQ people in the Affordable Care Act. And we've heard Trump make the same claims about abortion and gender-affirming care on the campaign trail. The left-wing gender insanity being pushed on our children is an act of child abuse. Very simple. Trump has been acting less anti-abortion recently because it doesn't poll well. But just in March, he signaled support for a national 15-week abortion ban. Even hardliners are agreeing seems to be 15 weeks, but I'll make that announcement at the appropriate time. On the bright side, one day, all of the heat in the universe will die. In your ass, it's the Another one of Project 2025's priorities is immigration, or rather, ending it. Project 2025 suggests severely rolling back both legal and unauthorized immigration by making hundreds of thousands of people vulnerable to deportation. To do this, they have a big mishmash of strategies, restricting certain types of visas, like temporary visas for the victims of human trafficking called T-visas, pulling resources away from immigration programs so it becomes harder and harder for immigrants to renew visas, and massively increasing ISIS authority so they can put even more resources 
forces into deportation. They even recommend punishing citizens who live with unauthorized immigrants by not allowing them to qualify for housing subsidies. So how likely is all of this to happen if Trump is elected? These policy suggestions are largely found in Project 2025 chapter on the Department of Homeland Security, written by half Dilf, half Muppet, Ken Cuccinelli. During Trump's first term, Cuccinelli served as our de facto unlawful Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security. These policy suggestions are largely in line with both Trump and the GOP's immigration platforms. We are going to have the largest deportation effort in the history of our country. We're bringing everybody back to where they came from. Just listen to Tom Homan, Trump's former director of ICE and Project 2025 contributor, talking at Heritage Policy Best. You ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till 2025. No one's off the table. If you're in the country legally, you better be looking over your shoulder. Well, that's threatening. At least he didn't give a keynote speech at the RNC. Former acting director of Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Tom Homan. To the millions of illegal aliens that Joe Biden's released in our country in violation of federal law, you better start packing now. One day, every atom that I've ever touched will burn at the center of the sun. Food in your ass, it's in America. A lot of attention has been paid to Project 2025's Christian nationalist and anti-immigrant policies. But the scariest part of this plan is how it reshapes the federal government turning it into Trump's personal plaything. Just look at the section on the Department of Justice. Project 2025 claims that the DOJ is a bloated bureaucracy staffed by a critical core of personnel who are infatuated with the perpetuation of a radical liberal agenda because lefties famously love cops. One way it plans to fix this problem is by turning the DOJ into Trump's personal enforcement arm. Project 2025 calls for the DOJ to take legal action against prosecutors who refuse to prosecute criminal offenses that they disagree with. So like hypothetically, if a blue city prosecutor in a red state decides not to go after people seeking and providing abortions, Project 2025 seemingly wants to use the DOJ to go after those prosecutors and bring federal charges against the people that they refuse to go after. They also want to eliminate the FBI director's 10-year term limit so that they can keep a Trump loyalist hawk in charge for as long as possible. So how likely is this to happen under Trump? Pretty likely. I will direct the DOJ to open civil rights investigations into radical left prosecutors' offices. The Department of Justice chapter was written by Gene Hamilton, seen here lurking, who served in Trump's DOJ and DHS. So it's a fair bet that he'd be given another high-ranking position in a Trump administration. In fact, there's a good chance that all of these Project 2025 authors end up working in the next Trump White House. And that's because of Project 2025's plan to replace government workers with hardcore Trump loyalists. You lie in the Project 2025 documents. Oh. Oh. Project 2025 calls for Trump to reinstate the executive order Schedule F, which would give the administration the ability to fire disloyal government workers in mass and replace them with political allies. Our goal is to assemble an army of aligned, vetted, trained, and prepared conservatives to go to work on day one to deconstruct the administrative state. Basically, they want to create an entire government staffed by prioritizing loyalty to Trump over experience and expertise. While a candidate with elite credentials might seem ideal, the best one will be, above all, loyal to the president and the constitution. Instead of the normal 4,000 presidential political appointments, Heritage now suggests aiming for 50,000 or more. And to make sure that they have enough candidates, Heritage has developed a personnel database of Trump loyalists. We have a database that anyone, you know, can sign up to actually get into this government. They even have a training academy and are using loyalty tests to find and recruit this army. This is your chance to truly make a difference. We're glad you're joining us. If they can do this, nearly every recommendation in Project 2025 will become more likely because there will be no experienced or reasonable government employees to stand in their way. So how likely is all of this? Very likely. This recommendation was written by Project 2025's director, Paul Dans. Dans served in the Trump administration as the chief of staff at the U.S. Office of Personnel Management, where he staffed approximately 4,000 Trump appointees. More importantly, though, Trump already started this in his first term. He tried to enact Schedule F by executive order, and he's already announced that he plans to reissue Schedule F on day one. First, I will immediately reissue my 2020 executive order restoring the president's authority to remove rogue bureaucrats, and I will wield that power very aggressively. All of that's to say, 
this is real. Trump's been trying to distance himself from Project 2025 because it doesn't pull well, but over 140 of Project 2025's core writers and editors reportedly held positions in Trump's administration and transition. Have you been in touch or will you be in touch with Donald Trump and the campaign? Our respective staffs have, have been in conversation throughout the campaign on the matters of policy. And the people at Heritage seem pretty confident that a lot of their suggestions will be received. Is it all right for us to assume that President Trump is committed to the Project 2025? Ultimately, yes. I think, you know, President Trump's very bought in with this. Trump also trusts Heritage to direct his policy choices. Like I said earlier, he adopted roughly two thirds of their recommendations during his first term. This is a great group and they're gonna lay the groundwork and detail plans for exactly what our movement will do. The good news is one day you'll die. Kidding, the good news is that the election hasn't happened yet and this, doesn't pull well. So spread the word. Right, so um, time for a walk?